Level 99 is a high-tech playground. This place offers nearly 50 different puzzle rooms offering physical and mental challenges. It is an addictive entertainment option, and in this video, I will explain why it's one of the best things to do in all of New England. Level 99 opened its first location in Massachusetts in 2021. It is located in the former Sears and the Natick Mall. This place was wildly successful, leading to them opening a second location in 2024. This one opened in Rhode Island at the Providence Place Mall, replacing the J.C. Penney. I have seen this place commonly compared to an escape room, but it is so much more than that. With an escape room, you typically have just one room that lasts up to one hour. Once you beat it, you are done, and the challenges are often purely mental. Meanwhile, Level 99 is roughly 50 different rooms. Each room takes 1-4 to four minutes to complete, and they are more than just mental puzzles. Some require athletic skill. If you've been to Bodeborg in Malden, Massachusetts, it is a similar setup with some key differences, but I'll get to that later. Now let's talk about the arrival experience. If you are visiting the Natick location, you are greeted by a large free parking lot. You then find level 99 the second floor. If you are visiting the Providence location, parking is only free if you stay less than 2 hours. Stay 2 to 5 hours, it costs $2. Stay 5 to 8 hours, it costs $15. Stay 8 to 20 hours, it'll cost you $20. This is because the mall is located downtown across from a train station. If they did not charge these rates to park, commuters like me would flood the garage. Sadly, there is no validation option. However, there is a small hack. If you leave late at night, the parking booth oftentimes is not manned. This means the gate to exit will be wide open, and you can leave without paying. This consistently happens for us after midnight. 50-50 if you leave around 11-11.30. While there are kiosks throughout the mall to pay for parking, always drive straight to the gate. You may get lucky and the gate is up, but if it isn't, you can pay with the credit card right there. Once inside, level 99 is on the third floor. It is on the end closer to Boscov's. There are four options to visit level 99. First is to enter for free, but this does not get you access to any of the games. It does allow you to access the kitchen and tap room, which offers night shift craft beer, or you can supervise your kids. Second is a two hour ticket. This costs $30 per person. Third is a four hour ticket. This costs $40 per person. Fourth is an all day ticket. This costs $50 per person. Now with these above prices, there is a $5 premium on weekends and holidays. I recommend buying your ticket in advance online and reserving a time. This allows you to enter without waiting. You are given a wristband called a Velo Band that is used for the games, and then you sign a waiver. You then can enter for a day or evening of fun. Once inside, there are complimentary lockers. This is where you can stow your coats, or any belongings. I recommend keeping your pockets empty if you plan to try any of the physical challenges. It is exceedingly easy for items to fall out as you're running, jumping, or swinging about. What age is this place best for? Level 99 is designed for adults over the age of 21, but realistically, I think anyone 10 and up can enjoy themselves here. There are some puzzles and activities that may be too challenging for kids to complete on their own, but I imagine they'd still have fun trying. Each room requires at least two people, but no more than six. Groups can split up for each individual room as needed, depending upon their interests or ability levels. The room's difficulty will scale based on the number of people. Depending on the number of players, the overall time allowed, and the points needed will vary. Each room has a touchscreen outside. This says the name of the room and the type of challenge that is. Those participating in a room tap their velo band at a tap point. If you're lucky, 
the room will be free and you press the play button to enter. Other times, you'll have to wait a few minutes for the prior group to succeed or fail. You'll be updated on their estimated time in the top right corner. During that time, you can use the touch screen to change your character's name and appearance if you want to. Now let's talk about the rooms. This is the heart and soul of the place. There is some overlap between the Natick and Providence locations. Some of the favorite rooms are exact copies of each other. Then each location also has some unique rooms as well. And it's also worth knowing that over time, they can add or change the rooms to offer new challenges. It encourages repeat visits. The rooms are set up in themed clusters. There will be two or three rooms with a loose overarching theme right by each other. For example, in Apocalypse area, there's a jungle area and a submarine area, just to name a few. Then the individual rooms have some tie-ins to that theme with some light theming. I have noticed one to two rooms each visit may be broken. Sometimes they are completely closed off. Other times, you realize you cannot complete the task because a sensor may not be working. Fortunately, that is few and far between. Most rooms will work as intended each visit. Then those individual rooms come in four different flavors. First is physical. These involve running, climbing, or balancing on platforms. Some just require you to move through a room to quickly hit a button, making them fairly accommodating. Others require far more skill, and you need to be an in-shape athlete to complete them. The next type of room is skill. These involve accuracy and precise movements. Most involve throwing or manipulating balls to specific positions. The next type of room is mental. These are puzzles requiring thought. Usually, they involve identifying and solving a sequence of some kind. The fourth type of room is mystery. These rooms have a goal that intentionally may not be straightforward, but you can usually figure it out after one or two tries. On that note, you can try each room as many times as you'd like until your session expires. It is unlikely you'll compete most rooms in full on your first try. Each one has their quirks. Some rooms combine multiple elements together, making them even more challenging. Between the quantity and variety, there is something here for everyone. If you are stumped at a specific room, the touch screen outside offers three hints. They get increasingly specific. This is most helpful for the mental or mystery rooms, where the objective may not be as straightforward. This does not help much with the physical rooms. The objective there is usually clear, it just can be difficult to actually do it. Now I want to highlight some of my favorite rooms. The ninja-themed rooms are among the most physical of both locations. Dojo has you jumping over and under rotating blades as you hit buttons on the wall. It gets absolutely chaotic in a good way as everyone runs around in circles while avoiding getting hit. Swing is a rope swing across a room where the floor is lava. Paths is a rock wall and suspended rope across a room where the floor once again is lava. Apocalypse is another area with physical challenges. Factory as you swing across the room on a zip line, but it's harder than you may expect because it's on an upward slope, so you may have to pull your teammates across. Checkpoint embraces your inner criminal as you need to disable the spotlights and avoid them as you jump platform to platform. There's a computer area with a mix of games. Glitch has you running to illuminated platforms before time expires. You'll have to get real close to your teammates to win this one. Password is an anagram maker where you need to think of specific words based on the clues to maximize your points. On that note, each room has a lot of replay value. Not only are the rooms fun, but you can earn one to three stars assuming you pass it to some extent. You earn more stars by completing the room in less time and or scoring more points. A successful star earning run will also earn you coins and or reward tokens. 
you can use these to redeem physical gifts. These include stickers, food, water bottles, and even t-shirts. These are stored in your Velo band, and you can check the status on the touch screens and use coins to get more tokens for the different rewards. Another way to earn coins is from duels. These are one-on-one -on -one games set up throughout the facility. My favorite of the bunch is Scramble, which is a form of dodgeball and handball combined. The crowd favorite seems to be Axe Run. As the name suggests, you run down a tight rope, avoiding swinging blades. This is brilliantly placed by the entrance. It was designed to be Instagrammed and shared on social media. You can also earn coins from hunts. All throughout the building are all sorts of pictures. Keep your eyes peeled and remember what you see. At the art kiosks, you click the objects you see. Guess wrong, and you are locked out for a while. This is a nice activity to do while waiting for a room to open up. If you are hungry, you have a tap room from Night Shift, which is a popular Massachusetts-based brewery. I have not tried much food there, but the soft pretzels you can earn as a reward taste very good. There also are multiple stations offering free water throughout the facility, which is much appreciated because you will work up a sweat here. We instead prefer to leave level 99 for a bit and grab food at the malls. You are free to come and go. Important note if you have the 2 or 4 hour option. At the kiosks, there is an option to pause your playtime. This allows you to take breaks whether it be to eat or use the bathroom without using your precious time. How much time do you need? Every time we have gone, we have spent most of a day. There's a large quantity of quality games, and we try each one multiple times to try and earn three stars. If you only plan to try each room and activity mostly once, you can see everything in four hours. With the two hour ticket, you will likely be rushed and probably can only see half the rooms and activities. So do I recommend level 99? Absolutely. This is one of the best activities to do if you're near Natick or Providence. It is a must do if you like physical and or mental puzzles. It feels like the hybrid of a playground and escape room. If you ever watched Legends of the Hidden Temple and Nickelodeon, the overall feel is similar to that show. There is so much to do here with all the rooms and duels. I much prefer this place to traditional escape rooms. The quantity of activities, plus the ability and incentive to redo them, makes level 99 take far longer. It makes the experience a much better value. R1 Rhode Island in Lincoln has a similar type of activity in Time Zone, but the rooms are less plentiful and less complex. Then the only other comparable experience I can think of in the area is Bodeborg and Malden, but I prefer level 99. I think Bodeborg requires more thought how to complete each room, but there is less incentive there to repeat a room once it's completed. You just get a boolean pass-fail there. So those are my thoughts on level 99, one of the best activities in all of New England. So those are my thoughts on level 99, one of the best activities in all of New England. What are your thoughts on this place? Have you been there? Let me know down in the comments. And if you've encountered a similar facility elsewhere, please let me know down in the comments because I would love to visit. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing. This channel typically focuses more on roller coasters and amusement parks, hence the name Canopy Coaster. But I occasionally review some stuff outside theme parks if it's really cool like this place. Thanks for watching.